Hello, everybody. Welcome to They Talk. Today we are talking about uh, something pretty, I guess, sinister of nature. Mm -hmm. And um, really, I don't think a lot of people are actually aware that this token existed, this uh, gift in a way, because it wasn't it wasn't something that was official, I guess, at the time, but it did exist. It did exist. And uh, of course, we're going back to the Nazis and occultism the, what, that uh, we started yes. uh, back in the season one of talking about, talking about the probable uh, history of a Nazi party with the occult roots with this Aryan nonsense and, uh, and mm. whatnot. And uh, what Dylan was here mentioning is actually this SS Einring, uh, the Totenkov's um, death's head ring. Yeah. That was made up by the head of the SS himself, the Heinrich Himmler. That's right. But uh, before we talk about such a, I guess, terrifying piece of jewelry... Um, let's ask you guys out there to please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet, so you can listen to all kinds of, I guess, uh, interesting uh, episodes about such things as the occult, uh, spiritual beliefs of the past and present, uh, a lot of the Finnish folklore characters and things like that we were talking about recently. And then if you go back to our season one, we have... Uh, a plethora of episodes, uh, even our fin Finland for Foreigners series. That is uh, quite an interesting one, and it describes a lot of my, um, I guess, experiences after moving to Finland from Canada. But this season we're focusing a lot on the occult, um, a lot of supernatural things, um, especially things that have to do with Europe and the uh, Scandinavian areas. But today... One of the biggest, I guess, occult, um, how would you say, flag bearers of mm. the last hundred years, uh, at least in certain positions of power that we know about, uh, was Heinrich Himmler. Yeah, that's that's really strange indeed. Like the uh, Hitler, as it has been proven, the head of the whole Third Reich was not in this kind of stuff at all mm. he wasn't spiritual in in the sense that he believed in these godly things and 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 occultism and and this kind of research but the Heinrich Himmler, Himmler was and there were other members of the high uh, high members of Nazi party that were into occultism yeah too but uh, of course the SS has this cloak of mystery too uh, with the horrible deeds that they did, and it's been reinforced by the popular culture, the video games uh, in the form of Wolfenstein, yeah, and, and and Indiana Jones stories, and and lots of other stuff that has uh, has come come to light in the two uh, like this past past century of entertainment. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, this SS Einring. Uh, unofficially called Tottenkopf ring, the Deadhead's ring was, as you mentioned, not the official piece uh, of the Nazi regime yeah. or an award, but it was made by the Heinrich Himmler that he gave to his officers. Yeah, exactly. It had it, even, I guess, his signature or something inscribed. Yeah, this was, there was engravings, yeah. And uh, it was not the state decoration, but uh, it was the same way the sought after a piece of memorabilia or uh, an award that the SS deal to, as it was the dagger, uh, the SS Honor Sword and the SS Honor Dagger, mm. which these days, I guess, the collectors are paying like hefty sums. I guess and, so. And there's even replicas going around mm. as paper knives and sh shit like yeah, right. that kind of stuff well, well, flies. There, there are people who are really into... Uh, especially a World War II memorabilia, mm -hmm. whether it be Nazis or Allied things, they just want. Mm. Let me have what. Let me yeah. uh, was obsessed with that stuff, and I wouldn't call him a Nazi. No. He just uh, in, in that terms of memorabilia. But I guess it is. If you had in your possession, 
even just as a collector, one of these rings, mm. it's it's pretty symbolic. And uh, the occult, uh, at least as far as we know, um, is very big on their symbolism. And uh, that's right. I mean, if you look at this ring, uh, just it's all about symbols. Here we have a the skull and crossbones, which is that uh, I guess that totem cough, um, which is uh, I guess translated death's head, but mm -hmm. it's everybody in the English speaking world, I guess, knows it as the skull and crossbones. Then you have these triangles on either side of it with the S, uh, I guess, SS kind of symbol, which is just, stuff yeah, the one uh, kind of lightning bolt esque looking S. And it has runes too, right? It has runes, and um, of course, it has the swastika. Yeah. Uh, but um, it is a very interesting piece, and to get to know what was like, what was it all about? Because I think at first, uh, it was given to just like the the highest. Uh, it was like a high honor uh, in that SS. Uh, group um, where they would, and I think it was only given out to the the people that showed the extraordinary uh, leadership skills in battle and that kind of thing. I think it's somewhere around 5,000 or 6,000 right. were originally awarded, like, yeah. yeah. Or like gifted, I guess. Yeah. But then later on, it seemed to be um, almost uh, like a initiation, or not an initiation, but like a graduation piece that if you spend three years as serving for the SS you get as an officer yes as, as yeah. an officer yeah. you get your your ring yeah uh, the, I think this like uh, he I, I, I'm not sure but I think he wanted to you know expand that uh, this kind of thing you know like you're part of something right yeah and all of these folks like I'm I'm not an expert in any way but it seems to me that this is a kind of like an extended club in a way. Yeah and, yeah. and and horrible as we know it. But these kinds of gifts and and like uh uh items that only selected group had, you know, enforced the the sense of belonging to that group and I think it invokes some sort of uh extra loyalty, you know, that you're you're in part of this the selected group, mm. but then you are some sort of like a part of this inner circle in a way. Yeah, that you have this gift from the Heinrich Himmler exactly. itself. Yeah, and you you are all connected. And mm. this reminds me. Well, I think we will get into this a bit later, but I'll drop the idea here. It reminds me of a possible uh, inspiration for such stories of Lord of the Rings or uh, at least a uh, you know kind of this idea of this these rings of power you know kind of reminds me of that kind of idea I, I think it this as um, the connections with Lord of the Rings don't come from the Nazis but I think they come from these old Germanic folk tales too mm. like the rings of this neighboring uh, fuck I totally butchered that there but there are these old like legends about these rings of power in, yeah. in the culture and even in Finnish literature this uh Valskärin kertomukset is uh, a story of, which is centered uh around this uh ring of power that whoever would have it they would have like success mm. and wealth and like they would achieve extraordinary tales but there would be a downfall at one point and of it's course. really great finished tale and that has ties to Lord of the Rings in this kind of thematic way and I mm. think these things might come from the same place yeah well that's that's I guess the idea is that uh, these are I think um, the idea behind probably Himmler's Himmler's idea is these rings have a power yeah and they unite the SS into like one uh, one entity in, in a way. And let's talk about the actual design of the ring and these ruins, the symbols that are on the, the sides of it, or I guess around yeah. the ring. We can we can drop the visuals as we yeah. speak about it. So uh, 
it's pretty clear for me that this shows very much so that uh, Himmler was like big into mythology and mm-hmm. o- occult. Definitely. And, uh, you know, there's these uh, Armanian ruins on the side and uh, four of them, uh, although technically I guess five, but there are two of the same of these Sig ruins that uh, looks like this SS kind of symbol, uh, two in the one anyway. And then there's the... Um, the Hagal ruin, the swastika ruin, and then this double ruin that has the SS, actual SS logo, and this arrow, uh, kind of arrow logo, uh, ruin symbol there. So this Sig ruin on the left and the right of the actual skull and crossbones, mm-hmm. um, this is, what do you think is, it's, I guess, representing this power um, by being in a triangle anyway, I guess that has something to do with... The uh, power of the sun and conquering energy. As, right. Yeah. So definitely, like, that's... Um, he was into occult and, and, and the mysticism and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that he believed that uh, the carrier of these runes have this kind of aura with them. Mm-hmm. And of yeah. course, they were the officers who led, he led his, you know, the SS, the elite, elite troops of the, the Third Reich. So right. they would now carry these that symbol of uh, power of the sun and the mm. conqueror. Exactly. And I guess this triangle symbol is quite a, uh, very much so associated with occult, Illuminati, this kind of thing. And it in representing the power of the sun, it's, uh, it definitely, uh, you can, you can see why mm. you would put that on uh, this ring. If you're a believer. Exactly. Um, do you would you think that these guys, uh, SS members that would take this ring, um, that they would actually know the meanings around it? Do you think there was a ceremony kind of a uh, labeling like what this ring is going to help you with? Or uh, uh, I believe that that there were folks who believed in this. Yeah, but. Uh, as far as uh, e- everyone, I don't think like they went along with it. And for me, I believe that the most would see this as a part of like their initiation to mm. inner circle. Yeah. Of course, I I think that there were pe- people who believed strongly on these things too, uh, along with Himmler. Right. And and what comes to the ceremony is like uh, which we're gonna talk more in the future episodes about Wavelsburg Castle, but. Uh, Himmler had this castle uh, that he changed to be the sort of a headquarters of the SS, like the spiritual headquarters. Mm. And he was meant to help there these kind of occultist meetings and the uh, the symbol of 12, like 12 leaders of the SS. Mm. And like we go there uh, into that more. But there, yeah. I believe that there were these actual rituals Hmm. In inside the SS, yeah. initiated by the Hitler, Himmler, Himmler, I mean. Yeah, exactly. Hitler wasn't a fan of these things. True, true. At least as far as we know. As far as we know, yeah. yeah. That's then, not saying that he was a good guy by any means. No, but it also... He was like, different I, kind of crazy. I think he denounced uh, the occult, mm. but then again, uh, in his position, it might have been a political uh, move, you know, to gain the trust of the the public because if you're all of a sudden believing in these these ancient magic kind of crazy weird stuff, but anyway, that's another that's another thing. We did talk a lot about uh, Himmler and the occult in in a few other episodes actually. Yeah. So, but so that was the Sikh rune, right? Yes. So now we have this Hagal ruin. It's framed by a hexagon. Uh, this is, I guess, representing the faith um, for the leaders of the organization. So this is your faith in the SS or the faith mm. in the Nazi party or the faith, faith in what uh, your organization that uh, these guys are... Uh, Ubermens, the yes. more than a ordinary man, the Aryan. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, this esoteric uh, meaning of this ruin, I guess it's like, um, what is this guide, uh, this uh, Guido von the list to enclose the universe in... Uh, in you and you control the universe. So I guess it's kind of um, talking about that you you are having more power and you are kind of in control. Yeah, as I see this, 
sounds to me like this was one uh, other way to enforce the their uh, leadership of of their beliefs you know that right. they were in the cause of right and they had the power and they had to already the power of the sun and and the power of conquering so this was a, another way of enforcing in this mystic mystic occultist way to their you know their way right yeah so again it's like uh these are very much occult uh representations here very all, much so. already on the like the these two big symbols on the ruin and then one i guess that everybody has seen before in terms of the actual symbol this swastika this hackenkreutz um it's standing on the vertex so uh framed by a square so it's in kind of like a it's on that uh, tilted angle mm -hmm. right uh the twisted cross as it's known i guess um of course this is going to be used i think that you couldn't have left this off but this is again uh i guess at least adapted by um the nazi party as a, a symbol of power for this aryan race right yeah um again like I was just in India, and you can see mm -hmm. swastikas everywhere. But of course, they are—they uh, are not tilted. They're right, right. right. And because the swastika, let's let's be honest here. Like, yep. it's a ancient symbol, mm -hmm. way, way, way more ancient than the 20th century and the the Nazi Party, who existed from 20s to 45. Yeah, and and they Hitler took the symbol from the old. It's a called sun wheel too, right? And even Finnish Air Force, you know, used to use it before even the Nazis were a thing. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't tilted, but like, of course, as <laughs> many things uh, have been ruined by the bad people and mm. and their causes, and uh, swastika is is one of them. And it's there's no way around it when you see swastika yeah. these days. You the first thing that comes in mind isn't the Indians or the Finnish Air Force no. or that it was an ancient symbol of it before them. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in even meaning uh, like more along the lines of peace and love. Yeah, you know? so, definitely um, not, yeah. It's uh, definitely not here, but uh, symbolizing this Aryan race and the power that mm. it uh, supposedly had at the time. Right. Um, that, I think, is is kind of more just needed to be on this ring uh just to qualify as a you know for the uh i don't know the you know if you don't have if you have a piece of nazi uh memorabilia and you don't have the ss or the um the swastika on there then you you didn't do the design properly i guess for them mm. then we have this uh double ruin and this is actually not a real i guess ruin that uh, you can find in the past this was created specifically I guess for this ring, or at least for the SS, and it has um, the SS traditional symbol uh, with the two S's in the lightning bolt fashion. Uh, then you have this Gibor ruin uh, plus a bind ruin, the, which symbolizes O and T, which I guess when you put it all together, um, this was designed uh, specifically by uh, Willigut, uh, I guess a designer at the time, and this is the idea is that it spells uh, the German word for God, mm. G O T T, Gott. And um, I mean, it's interesting that they have that kind of thing on there because they're not, in terms of the occult, their vision of God and all that is, yeah, is they were, different. They, the Himmler and the SS were about Valkyrias and, yeah. and you know, the the Norwegian uh, myths too, so. I wonder if this is like giving you the power of a god, you know, this turns you yeah. to like that you are of gods. Right, right, you know, yeah, that, that could be. Way. Because they had the power of conquering power, the power of the sons, mm. the power of the Aryan race there. So right. they were, it was all about the power and their cause and brotherhood. That, that's pretty fucking ominous, right? Yeah, it's power, 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 and yeah. death. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, it's it is very much so an an occult um, how would you say uh, piece, and I think that if uh, the idea that this is this ring is giving you power, uh, it is it's pretty well it's pretty amazing idea. Um, 
of course, they seem to give these rings out like as They're, if you, you know, won a, you won some bingo or whatever. I think I think uh, the hidden meaning was that that they were trying to tie them more closely to the inner circle, the yeah. officers' part, so they would like be more loyal to the SS and that way to the party. And and it had the Himmler signature too, right? Didn't you yeah, like, mention that? Yeah, his signature and the name of the uh the person it was gifted to at least uh, for the be the first um the first initial run of these rings that were given to those high ranking officers yeah. that showed the leadership skills and then the, the here here is that the it became later with the letter from himmler that said like for reminder of at all those times to be willing to risk the life of ourselves for the life of the whole okay which i would presume meaning their cause yeah yeah of the uber mens but definitely like uh he and the ss uh, to extent believed in the magical power of these because i believe that what i came across with the wevelsburg castle research that these rings in a death of the officer who you know had had the ring mm. they had to be returned to that castle Yeah, right. So they were out of circulation. Say that you couldn't sell them, you couldn't like give them as a heritage to your kids or anything. Like they had mm. to be returned to that uh, main castle of the SS. They belong to the SS. Yeah, they belong to the SS, and mm. they were yours to carry. But yeah, and in a lot of ways, it it is that kind of idea that sounds like he had this. He was so. At, Uh, attached to the idea that there was power in those rings mm. and it wasn't to be given to just anyone. Right. So let's talk a bit about like the, I guess, similarities um, with this and the Lord of the Rings, because I guess Lord of the Rings is all about these uh, rings of power and uh, how those rings of power actually uh, aren't in any ways good in the end of the day. They are always leading to some form well, of evil. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings the is, the idea was that they were the ring makers made these rings to el elves, the human kings and the dwarves and yeah. And even these the Maya Mayars who were these uh spirits from the from the Valar who were the gods of the Middle Earth and the Undying Lands. They carried these rings, they were rings of fire and and mm. then Nenia and uh, whatnot. And then the Sauron uh, the who served this bigger, bigger evil, the Satan of Middle-earth, Morgoth, like deceived them all and 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 made this master ring who would yeah. control all of these rings. And and one after another of the human kings fell under the spell of Sauron because mm. of the rings. And and the ring would give you the power, the ring, the, 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 the if you would carry the one ring, you would be conquering everything and mm. you would be basically unstoppable, but it would end up corrupting you. Exactly. Uh, and I guess it was by that design. And I wonder if Himmler himself, if he had his own personal ring that was maybe different hmm. from That's an interesting these, uh, yeah, these typical ones. But um, specifically, I guess you would call him the Lord of the Ring or the Rings in this kind of specific situation because... Um, How many rings did he eventually give out? Was something over fourteen thousand rings? I think. I believe fourteen thousand five hundred was the approximately the amount that is be to believe that they they returned to the castle. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So there, at least uh, that's how many were had been. Uh, those uh, officers had been killed and and all that. Uh, in that way. No, no, it was eleven thousand five hundred. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I I got my numbers mixed. I have them here, but I I mix them. So, uh, at the end of the war, Himmler, seeing the ring as personification of all he believed, had all the remaining rings, approximately eleven thousand five hundred, as I wrote here, blast sealed into the mountain near Wivelberg's castle. Uh huh. Have they ever re re like guess, um, busted them out? <laughs> I I don't think so. And uh, around fourteen thousand five hundred rings are thought to be in existence today. And um, it goes somewhere around four thousand five hundred pounds in sales, but there are a lot of fakes too. I would imagine, and yeah, I, would, uh, I, I would. I found a lot of fakes when I was like researching the internet. Like there were people, experts commenting that these are really like too in good of shape, and mm. here's the anomaly here, and you know. Hmm. 
Well, there you go. And so in a lot of ways, if you are in possession of some form of this kind of ring, uh, I would say you better watch out and, uh, that, um, it is definitely something, especially if you are into these, this occult ideas and not only into them as in, uh, you are a positive believer, uh, or if you're a cautious believer like we are, we don't practice any occult-like things, mm. but we want to be educated on those lines of those uh, the occult uh, practices because uh, you have to know your enemy, I guess, in a yeah. lot of ways. And uh, as far as I know, there is nothing too good about what the occult does because it seems to be very much focused on power and uh, these kind of things that are generally... That's total heel stuff. Yeah. So... As they would say in professional wrestling. That's right. But yeah, do you guys out there, do you know anybody who has a death death's head ring, one of these uh, rings from the uh, the SS? And uh, do you have you ever seen one uh, in a museum or anything like that? And you don't have to tell us if you have one and you love it or you got some kind of crazy power when you're naked in the shower or something like that, but... Um, we want to definitely know what you guys think. Did you know about this ring and did it, did you know it existed and the symbolism and meanings of the ruins all that adorn the, I guess, the circumference of this ring? Also, it has, uh, I guess, those are on top of what would be considered oak leaves mm. that are around the ring too. But um, unfortunately... The ring has such a terrible and demonic um, image, or, and I guess a, a symbolism that uh, it's not, it's not something that I would ever want to wear. So I mean, uh, I'm not a ring guy per se, but my brothers have a lot of these skull rings, and I could see some people not knowing, although there's the swastika there. But if there was no swastika there, you could see a lot of people just thinking, "Hey, it's a cool rock and roll skull ring." Yeah, and. Uh, not knowing what they are getting involved with. So, do you have any more to add about the death's head ring? One more thing, and it's a bit in contradiction, but uh, by January 1945, 64% of the rings made had been returned to Himmler after the deaths of their holders. Mm. In addition, 10% had been lost on the battlefield and 26% were either kept by the holders or their whereabouts were unknown. Mm -hmm. And there is a legend of those rings being in the mountain near the Wevelburs castle. Right. I think if you want one, if you can't find a copy in the internet, go dig the mountain. That's right, yeah. And see what you find let us know in the comments below. So... Like, share, and subscribe this video if you did like it, and subscribe anyway, please. It helps us out quite a lot. Share this video with your friends that might be interested in such things as the occult and supernatural uh, phenomenon, and become a fellow talker and talk with us about your views and feelings about such crazy, wacky, and weird, scary, and disturbing topics that we are talking about in this season two of They Talk. And definitely, if you are a subscriber already, make sure that you take that hammer of justice and, and ring that bell. <laughs>